Hey everyone, welcome back. We're here to talk about a somewhat challenging topic, which is graphical analysis, with a specific focus on linearization, which is a technique used to make any physics relationship appear as a straight line when you graph it. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the common mathematical relationships in physics. Well, of course, we have a direct relationship, y equals kx. Uh, I'm avoiding the common way of writing this, y equals mx. Uh, so you can see that uh, instead of mass, we're talking about some kind of constant. And this constant doesn't have to be the slope. It can appear as a constant in many different types of relationships, not only just linear relationships. This is why I prefer to use k in this regard. So a direct relationship you can uh, express as y equals k times x. Two variables, y and x, one constant k. You can also have a linear relationship, which is very closely related to a direct relationship. However, however we also have a uh, constant value, sometimes termed a starting point or a vertical intercept, c. So this type of graph does not go through the origin. We can have a square relationship where y equals kx squared, some constant k times x squared. And here's a case where k will not be the slope. Uh, so that's why I'm using the letter k there. It is just some constant. We also have a square root relationship. y can equal some constant k times the square root of x. Also an inverse relationship, y equals k over x. Again, k not the slope in this case. And finally, uh, we could have an inverse square relationship, y equals k over x squared. So first we have y equals k times x. Our variable y, which is typically the dependent variable, equals some constant k times our independent variable x. Uh, so another way of writing this is simply y is proportional to x. If you double x, that means y will double. Here's a graph of y equals kx. You can see it's a straight line, and it goes through the origin 0, 0. The way you say this is y is proportional to x, or you might say y is directly related to x. This is a very, very common relationship in physics, uh, in both laws and definitions. Here are some examples where you might see a direct relationship. And even e equals mc squared is a direct proportion. Uh, in this case, you may say, well, what about that c squared? Well, c squared is just a constant. In fact, it may be the most constant thing in the universe. No matter what frame you're in, c is the same thing. So this just shows that e is directly proportional to or directly related to the mass of the object. Another common relationship is y equals kx plus c also phrased as y being linearly related to x. And here's a graph of a, such a relationship. Notice that it is linear, it's a straight line, but it also does not uh, pass through the zero, zero, or the origin. It's got some non-zero vertical intercept. And in this type of relationship, we do have a constant slope. In other words, delta y over delta x is a constant, but there may be some initial conditions there may be a constant of the physical system, or there may be even some systematic error, uh, which causes a non-zero intercept. A couple of examples would be if you graph v versus t. v initial would be the value of v at time equals zero. If you're exerting a force on a mass, but there is kinetic friction, so your f sub k would be the vertical intercept if you graphed the force applied versus the acceleration. That's a, a constant of the physical system, that will show up on our linear graph. You could also have a situation where there's some kind of systematic error. Let's say you're weighing a bunch of masses. Maybe the scale when nothing's on it is already reading two newtons. We could just graph the measured weight versus the mass of the object, and we would get a graph that had slope of g and an intercept of that negative scale error. We don't even have to know about it ahead of time. Our graph will reveal that. Another common relationship is y equals kx squared. You could say y is proportional to x squared. This is what that graph looks like, and that's the way you'd say it. There are a lot of examples of this kind of relationship. Here's a few for motion and energy. 
Yet another common relationship, y equals k times the square root of x. When you see this, you could say y is proportional to the square root of x. Uh, you should note, though, very importantly, you can express this as a square relationship. Notice if I square both sides of uh, what I have above, you get y squared is proportional to x. y equals k times the square root of x. Squaring both sides, you get y squared equals k squared times x. That's going to be come in handy later as we much prefer uh, squaring numbers than taking the square root. You're going to see we're going to need to do this. We're going to transform a square root relationship by squaring both sides into a square relationship. Makes things somewhat easier. Uh, there's a bunch of examples. Here's a few from waves and oscillations of this type of relationship. And we have the period of the pendulum equaling 2 pi times the square root of L over G. That is a relationship that we're going to take a much closer look at in the next video. This relationship is also very common. Y equals K over X. When you say this, you simply say Y is inversely proportional to X, which means the same thing as Y is proportional to 1 over X. It is just as common as direct. Uh, you can write many direct relationships as an inverse relationship. Uh, here are some examples. Another common relationship, y equals k over x squared. You can say y is inversely proportional to x squared, or you could say y is directly proportional to 1 over x squared. Um, there are a lot of examples in this, especially in fields and light intensity. Uh, whenever you have something that's being spread out over a surface area, like light that's spread out over a sphere, for example, in fact, with stuff like gravity, we have what are, what's called uh, gravitational flux lines are spread out over a sphere. Uh, so th that's one way of looking at why this uh, the force of gravity is GMM over R squared. It's being spread out over an area. We also have electric fields. And light intensity, as I mentioned before, is the power of the light source over 4 pi r squared, which is just the area of a sphere that that light gets spread out over. You can notice right here the similarity between y equals k over x squared and y equals k over x. Sometimes just by inspection, it is very hard to tell the difference, which is why looking at our theoretical relationships are such an important part of this process. Another relationship we're going to talk about is exponential decay in approach. I'm not going to talk about this too much now, uh, but it is of the form y equals ke to the negative cx, where k and c are constants, or y equals k times the quantity 1 minus e to the negative cx. This is actually pretty common in physics, specifically to physical situations with feedback, when the rate of change of a quantity depends on the quantity itself. One perfect example is velocity. When you're falling through air or through water, you go faster, but then there's more drag force. So that's uh, expressed by these equations. Uh, capacitor charging and discharging, as well as inductor charging and discharging in electricity and magnetism follow this pattern. And here are some examples. So that's all there is for the types of relationships. Now in the next video, let's move on to how to analyze a physical situation or an experiment to determine how to linearize a function so we can do very complex analysis and determination of unknown values even if a relationship is not linear. See you in the next video.